Hey everybody, I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group, you know, and um, I realized out of all of the videos that I've made over all these years, I mean, I have like 300 videos now on YouTube, that I don't have a video on quadrant analysis. Um, quadrant analysis is a concept that I've been teaching for almost 20 years, or actually more than 20 years now. Um, this is a concept that came up that Dr. Andrew Coggin came up with and we have introduced it in Cycling Peak software, which is what it was called back in 2003 when it was launched, which became WKO or Training Peaks WKO software. And this is a way to measure the neuromuscular demands of cycling. So it's how we create watts, okay? So we all know, right, we can create a thousand watts by pushing you know, really hard on the pedals and sprinting and pedaling really quickly, but you also could produce a thousand watts by pushing a really big gear very slowly. So this is really measuring how hard you're pedaling and how fast you're pedaling or not how fast you're pedaling and not how hard you're 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 uh, you're pushing, right? So it's measuring these actual forces and velocities that the leg muscles are generating to produce a given power, right? So there's an equation here on your screen. You can see this is the equation. Um, you know, it shows this is what this is: average effective pedal force (AEPF), average effective pedal force. So what does this look like? when we look at this and these are the different quadrants okay so what this is is we've got a yellow line that comes across here this is your FTP okay so you can set this in obviously in WKO and in training peaks and other software applications but this is what you're setting right and when you set this FTP you know what we're looking at here on the y-axis is your average effective pedal force in Newtons okay so this is pedaling really hard at the top right this is not pedaling hard at the bottom over here on the the x-axis this is circumferential pedal velocity this is your cadence okay so this is pedaling really fast this is pedaling really slow and this line here in the middle this is 90 rpm okay this is what we call your threshold cadence and this is really where you um you know pedal when you pedal normally right so when you're not when you're going up a steep climb not when you're doing a hill climb time trial maybe when you're doing a flat time trial or maybe when you're out riding in in just a nice solid tempo ride what's your preferred cadence that's what we would say is your threshold cadence okay so that's what then when you when you draw this line intersect it with the pow, uh, your threshold power then that creates this horizontal line which then creates your quadrants okay so that's what this is this is really just an XY plot remember back to algebra um, that's all we're doing here is plotting XY points now so this is how fast you pedal right and this is how hard you pedal Okay, so that's what these things are. Quadrant one up here, this is high cadence and high force. So you're pedaling really, really hard and you're pedaling really fast, over 90 RPM. So this is sprinting, okay? So when you see somebody in this quadrant, these points that are gonna be in this quadrant, they're going to be sprinting, okay? They're going to be out of the saddle, they're going to be going super hard and fast, okay? Quadrant two is this quadrant here. This is low cadence and high force. Okay, so this is pushing a big gear. This is putting out, you know, less, you know, using less than 90 RPM as your cadence. And this is an example of mountain biking. You know, a lot of mountain bike races, a lot of mountain biking. We push a big gear for, uh, with a lot of force out there at a low cadence. Uh, this is also a, an important area to be for what we call tractor pulls. So we do tractor pulls or big gear intervals in order to elicit a strength adaptation to actually improve the strength of the muscle. So doing big gear intervals, short 30 second blasts in a huge gear. All right, I'm not talking about riding at 50 RPM for hours, right? That's riding here, but you're not putting out a lot of force, okay? So this is a really high force, low cadence. Quadrant number three is down here. 
This is where you're out riding an endurance ride. This is your coffee shop ride. This is your active recovery rides. You're not pedaling hard. You're not pedaling fast in quadrant three, okay? Now quadrant four over here, this is high cadence, so pedaling fast, and but not pedaling hard, okay? So this is like being in a pace line. Okay, so now you're riding on that wheel and you have to stay on that wheel and you're constantly adapting to stay on that wheel. You need to keep your cadence over 90 RPM so you can adapt quickly to that. It's riding in a pace line, it's riding in a peloton, in a group, right? It's um, racing in a criterium, right? This is very, very normal to be in quadrant four in a criterium. So these are the different four quadrants how do we use these in training and in racing? Well, number one, we use these to um, learn if the racing demands and the training demands equal each other, okay? So we have a racing demand where if you're a mountain bike racer, you're going to spend a lot of time in quadrant two. But what if during your training, you're actually spending most of your training time in quadrant four? You could be producing the same wattage, right? You could be producing the same wattage, but you're not creating the watts the same way. So this is a really important thing, is that you have to train to the demands of the event, right? That's the number one concept that I talk about a lot in training with a power meter, train to the demands of the event. Right? What are the demands of the event? If they're in quadrant two, then you need to do training in quadrant two. Conversely, if you are doing a bunch of criteriums and riding in a group a lot, and you're riding, doing a lot of sprints, and then you're riding at a quick cadence in quadrant one and four, and that's a regular part of your races, but you spend most of your training time in two and three doing those same watts, hitting the wattage numbers, but not creating them correctly. So we need to change kind of the way that you're training to meet the demands of the event. This is a really important thing. It's secondly, we use it to confirm that you are doing the right quadrant, right? You are creating them correctly. So once we know the demands of the event, then we can use this in a post analysis to say, oh wow, you did knock out those sprint intervals because all of your data is in quadrant one, or you did do big gear intervals correctly, they're all in quadrant two. In this example you see right here, we see the red dots right here. This is a time trial, okay? So this is a time trial, but it's actually just below this athlete's threshold, okay? So their threshold is right here. When we would see a, a time trial where they rode right at their threshold and above, you would see points just above this. This blob would shift up a little bit. The red blob would shift up. Shift up. So that's what we look at when we see this. We can identify kind of where you create these wattages and do we need to make a change for that. Now, this is in WKO5. This is a great chart in, or a great dashboard. This is a great quadrant analysis analysis dashboard in WKO5 and you can see this so let me show you this in WKO5 as well because that'll be really really critical to understand kind of what's happening here from that perspective okay so that's really what we're looking at in this as well as is just just this quadrant analysis plot okay so definitely a key concept here that I want you to understand um, in, uh, in 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 this um, you need to really figure this out and understand how to use these quadrants um, and that's a, a critical part to to learning about quadrant analysis right quadrant one high cadence high force quadrant two low cadence high force quadrant three low cadence low force quadrant four high cadence low force all right thanks a lot for watching I'm Hunter Allen with Peaks Coaching Group check us out on Facebook I've got a power newsletter that I send out every week. Subscribe to that on peakscoachinggroup.com. Uh, I do tips all the time on Facebook under Peaks Coaching Group and also Instagram. 
Um, so look at those, check those out. I'm always on there. Uh, we've got cycling camps, we have coaching. We love working with all of our athletes, no matter what level you're at, whether you're looking for longevity, whether you're looking to increase your FTP, you wanna win Leadville, you wanna do great in a Grand Fondo, or you wanna win a stage in the Tour de France. We have coaches for you. So thanks again, have a great day, and I appreciate you watching.